Recently, I revisited my past and reviewed Batman Arkham Asylum, a game I'm very fond of and a game that I had been looking to try and review for some time. I also said in that video that I would be making separate reviews on the other games in the series, and while it has taken me a while to get here, I did mean that. I have a feeling this video will do well, and the reason I say that is because it seems that out of nowhere, the Arkham series has had some complete resurgence in popularity. I don't know why, nor does anybody, but I'll take what I can get, because those first two games are really good. It also helps that I'm making this video fresh off the hype of the Batman movie trailer, which makes the movie look fucking awesome, and also the Gotham Knights game trailer, which, eh, it looks okay, nothing too out of the ordinary, but let's move on, because that's not important. With that said, I do think it's the right time to revisit this game again, finally, especially with everything going on right now and the run of good fortune that DC is having. I think that this is still held in very high regard and considered one of the best superhero games ever made, if not the best, even despite a certain PS4 game. This is also one of the Arkham ports that actually worked that I was able to play. I had to play Asylum on console because the Steam version wouldn't boot up for me at all. I'm also probably going to play Arkham Origins on PC rather than the console version because apparently Warner Brothers Montreal actually knows how to handle a port. But with that said, let's get into this video where I talk about and review Batman Arkham City. Despite how it may look, compared to most games now, and even at the time, Arkham City really didn't take that long to develop at all, which is even more surprising to me considering that it's an open world game, unlike its predecessor. Rocksteady were brainstorming ideas for a sequel several months before Arkham Asylum's eventual completion, which explains why there are numerous easter eggs in that game that hint at a sequel. Arkham Asylum came out in August of 2009, and the pre-production on Arkham City began several months earlier in February of that same year. They also had the same people in charge of Arkham Asylum. Stephen Hill and Paul Crocker. They also wanted Arkham City to be darker than its predecessor, which it was, and that's really no surprise considering the darker undertones and atmosphere that this game has in comparison to Arkham Asylum. They also wanted to introduce the Batmobile as a base mechanic for the game, but then cut it in mid-2010 after realizing that the physics for it just wouldn't work, something that they completely disregarded a few years later with Arkham Knight. I also stated that Arkham City was open world, and it would be the first in the Arkham series to be open world out of all the rest of them. Stephen Hill said that Rocksteady included the open world because they wanted Arkham City to give the game that Batman and Gotham feeling that Arkham Asylum didn't exactly deliver. Arkham Asylum is more of a semi-open world game than anything else. Rocksteady really wanted to expand the series with Arkham City into being huge and of much more replay value, hence the name Arkham City. Letting the player roam amongst the gloomy streets of Gotham gave them something new to explore, as well as giving the gliding mechanic a tremendous new amount of use. They also wanted to showcase more villains that Arkham Asylum either didn't focus on as much or at all. There were even talks amongst developers at Rocksteady of a multiplayer element possibly being in the game, although to be honest, I'm not sure how that would have worked out. A sequel to Arkham Asylum had also been rumored for a while, as early as mere weeks after Arkham Asylum's eventual release, and it was pretty obvious that it was going to happen given the hints in that game. The game hadn't officially been confirmed until August 5th, 2010, when Rocksteady officially announced the sequel, Batman Arkham City, on their website. Arkham City was marketed to appeal to people people outside of the superhero game's typical fandom. As I said, this was a stacked time for games and also the height of the seventh generation. With exciting new releases coming left and right like Skyrim, Red Dead Redemption, Fallout New Vegas, and the massive announcement of Grand Theft Auto V, as well as the beginning of oversaturation in the shooter market. With games like Modern Warfare 2, Halo Reach, and Bad Company 2, Arkham City wanted to differentiate itself from the typical beat-em-up while still retaining the core elements of what made Arkham Asylum good in the first place. They also announced a single player fighting game spin-off for mobile called Arkham City Lockdown to release alongside Arkham City a few weeks after. After a significant amount of time had passed, Batman Arkham City officially released on October 18th, 2011 for the Xbox 360 and PS3, with the PC port releasing a month later and the Wii U port a year later on November 18th, 2012 as a launch title for the console in North America. I did say previously that Arkham Asylum had the best gameplay in the series, but after going through Arkham City again, I don't know if I can really still stand by that claim. Arkham City takes everything great about Arkham Asylum's gameplay and improves it while also taking the less good or even bad elements and fixing them the best they can. Let's talk about the combat. The combat in Arkham City is a significant overhaul from its predecessor. It makes it more fluid, more challenging, and more enjoyable. Sure, not all the gadgets serve that much of a purpose, but the hand-to-hand -hand combat and its fluidity more than makes up 
out for that for me. This brings me to the boss fights, and wow, the boss fights in Arkham City are great. The Mr. Freeze boss fight is a fan favorite among the Arkham fan base, as well as probably the definitive Arkham boss fight. Solomon Grundy is pretty good. The Clayface boss fight is amazing, and my favorite Arkham City boss fight because of the context that I'll go into when I talk about the story. The combat and boss fights in the Arkham series in general, and especially Arkham City, are fucking amazing, but then something I don't like is the Riddler trophies. I think in my Arkham Asylum video, I kind of briefly alluded to how I really don't like them in this game, but let me talk about why. It's simply such a hassle to get them with no real payoff. Collecting them comes off as a brutal chore, and this would be fine if it had any real payoff whatsoever, but it doesn't. I've played through Arkham City six times now, and I hate it more each time. Apart from that, I talked a little bit about the game's open world when going over the game's development, and now I'm gonna go a lot more in-depth about it. This game is dead honest proof that an open world Batman game can be absolutely amazing if done right. It fits the Batman character and atmosphere absolutely perfectly. I may hate the Riddler trophies with every ongoing second of my entire existence, but let me digress into talking about the general open world. The depiction of Gotham in this game is fantastic. Sure, it's not exactly the most lively open world of all time, nor is there that much to do, but this is Gotham City, not Los Santos. If anything, sometimes this makes me really surprised that there wasn't a good open world Batman game made sooner. I mean, come on, the opportunity is right there. You could say that there really wasn't a good Batman game in general until Arkham Asylum and that's honestly true, there really wasn't, but come on, still, it's right in front of your eyes. Something else I like about the open world and gameplay in general for Arkham City is how gliding around the city feels super nice, and that's something I can essentially say for the series in general. For 2011, this game in general just looks great. Not even just the 2016 remaster, the original version still looks really good. Maybe it's just the fact that I'm playing the PC version with the highest graphics settings, but I don't even think it's just that. I watched videos of the original 360 and PS3 versions versions, and they still hold up well too. For a game that came out at the end of the 7th gen in 2011, it still looks visually a lot better than a lot of the other games that came out that same year. As far as other elements of the gameplay go, the stealth is significantly improved from Arkham Asylum. Not that Asylum's stealth system was bad by any means, but I can mention across the numerous times I've played Arkham Asylum to completion certain bugs that didn't exactly add up. On the original Xbox 360 version of Arkham Asylum, I remember a point where an enemy spotted me, although I was completely away from anywhere they could have seen me. The Arkham City stealth system is a significant improvement. Neither in the original nor the remaster did I ever encounter any issues with it. It's also worth mentioning that Batman isn't the only playable character in this game. You can also play as Catwoman, whose gameplay is actually pretty good. In a game mainly designed around gameplay for Batman, they balance it out pretty well with Catwoman, I think. There's also Robin and Nightwing, even though you can't play them in the main story mode or open world. They're only available in challenge maps as DLC characters. And that's another thing, challenge maps. The challenge maps in Arkham City are really nice and probably my favorite in the entire series. I realize I didn't really go over them much in the Arkham Asylum video, so allow me to explain what they are. It's pretty self-explanatory, they're challenges. Other open world games did and still do this all the time. From Arkham Asylum to Arkham City, nothing really changed about them all that much other than the content of the challenges themselves. Nightwing gameplay could have been handled a little better, but it is what it is and I can forgive it. It's still pretty good. The thing is, nothing about Arkham City's gameplay ever completely pulled me out of the experience. I find it really impressive how Rocksteady managed to make gameplay for people like Catwoman and Robin still be good and work in a game mainly meant to focus around gameplay for Batman, something Arkham Asylum wasn't able to do given its limitations both in terms of design and hardware. I think that's something you could apply to Arkham City in general, but especially right there. I wouldn't call this game a true revolution or masterpiece of game design or anything like that, but it did something really unique for the series and it's a shame that neither Arkham Origins nor Arkham Knight would improve at all upon the game design on display in this game. Game. This game was such a massive improvement on every front from Arkham Asylum, which, mind you, was already an amazing game to begin with when nobody expected it to be, and it's weird to consider how not much was really innovated after this. The story displayed in Arkham City isn't just the best story in the Arkham series, but one of my favorite stories in a game in general, and I genuinely mean that. I feel like it's played off the same way something like a typical franchise, trilogy, show, or whatever usually is. The first installment, so in this case Arkham Asylum, is played more safe to set boundaries to be broken by its sequel. This is what happens in a lot of cases, some certain examples being the new hope to The Empire Strikes Back, Combat Evolved to Halo 2, Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 2. The classic way to set up a sequel 
before it actually happens is to end your story on a memorable note and then pick up on it with the momentum in your sequel to make sure it works and the story is good. And oh my god, Arkham City's story is fantastic. It takes that classic Batman comic feel that Arkham Asylum had and turns it into an edge-of-your-seat thriller that keeps your attention to the end credits. Once again, it brings back the cast from Batman the Animated Series and Arkham Asylum, and it's also written by Paul Dini, the lead writer from Batman the Animated Series. I'm gonna go over the actual content of the story now, so in case you for some reason haven't played this game, this is a spoiler warning, go play the game. Anyway, for the real premium member Club Penguin VIPs who have actually played the game and finished it, here I go with the story. So one year after the story of Arkham Asylum, the mayor of Gotham City, Quincy Sharp, is like, yeah, we need something bigger than an asylum to hold these guys, let's get something different. And so he closes both Arkham and Blackgate and purchases Hotel Trivago's worst-rated one-star slums in Gotham and makes it into a giant prison called Arkham City, obviously, hence the title. He puts it into the hands of a man named Hugo Strange, someone who's secretly manipulating Sharp with everything and also has a secret military force called Tiger to guard him. Also, the Joker is still suffering from a disease he got after taking the Titan formula at the end of Arkham Asylum. Don't do drugs, kids. I also want to mention that the voice acting in this game, especially from Mark Hamill as the Joker, is off the fucking charts. <laughs> that actually is... <laughs> Pretty funny! <laughs> <laughs> So the story begins with Bruce Wayne holding a press conference to talk about his opinion on the whole situation with Arkham City and explain how he really isn't a fan. However, he gets captured by Tiger Guards and sent into Arkham City to be imprisoned, where Hugo Strange releases him into the one-star-reviewed slums, but not before telling him that he knows he's Batman, and already this introduces a very interesting dynamic for the story in general. For Batman in particular, in a lot of cases, especially when it comes to being outside the comics, it's really rare to see a story where the antagonist knows who Batman actually is. Add to that the fact that Hugo Strange is already an incredibly interesting character overall. He was in the comics, but he was very much one of those villains that most people don't really think of off the top of their head. He also stands out a lot from the typical villain in the Arkham series and just Batman's rogues gallery in general. What I like about Batman's villains and rogues gallery is that they all feel so much more human and realistic, which makes it feel more believable. They make it feel more grounded, and nowhere is that more true than Hugo Strange in this game. He's a completely calm and collected human human being above all else, but he's also very intimidating and a unique villain unlike any other who knows the true identity of Batman, which introduces a whole new dynamic. I could probably even go as far as to say the main reason Batman stands out compared to all these other superheroes in modern society in general is because of his villains. Anyways, Hugo Strange's big motivation in Arkham City is an action called Protocol 10, a plot formulated by Hugo Strange and Ra's al Ghul to kill all of Gotham's criminals in the midst of any potential breakout. After the cutscene where Bruce is captured and sent to Arkham, we get the first bit of gameplay as Batman, where he saves Catwoman from being killed by Two-Face and the Joker, following Joker to his hideout to see if he knows anything about Protocol 10. It's there that he learns that the Titan formula Joker drank in Arkham Asylum is still killing him slowly and spreading across his blood. Don't do drugs, kids. In a twist of fate, Joker captures Batman and injects him with the same disease. Just say no. You get out and you try to get to Mr. Freeze, who supposedly has been developing a cure, but he was captured by the Penguin, so you have to go through the Solomon Grundy boss fight as well as the Penguin before finally liberating Mr. Freeze, who tells you that the cure is useless. So he goes back to the Joker, only to realize that he's fine, and while the two go at it, Hugo Strange activates Protocol 10 and has Tiger Guards start executing criminals in Arkham. With this said, you have to get to Wonder Tower and disable Protocol 10. Once that's done, it's revealed that Ra's al Ghul was the mastermind behind the entirety of Arkham City all along, and he kills Hugo Strange for failing to pull through with Protocol 10. With his dying breath, Hugo Strange activates Protocol 11, which is just blowing up Wonder Tower, and Ra's al Ghul just kills himself to avoid capture. With that out of the picture, Joker finds a way to contact Batman and tells him that he has Talia al Ghul, daughter of Ra's, and that he's going to kill her unless he meets him at the Monarch Theater, typical villain threat, but it's whatever. Once you get there, Joker is seemingly dead, it looks like Talia Talia killed him, but that's not real, and the real Joker kills Talia, who still has the disease that's slowly killing him. Also, Joker looks like hammered shit here at the end of the game. You know why? He's dying. The Titan formula. Steroids. Drugs. Okay? Don't do drugs. Don't. Do. Drugs. This is your brain, you see it? You're looking at it? Good. Th that that's your brain. 
This is your brain on drugs. Anyways, the fake Joker that Talia killed shifts into Clayface and it turns into what is by far my favorite boss in the entire Arkham series and probably among my favorite final bosses of all time. Seriously, just such an amazing boss fight. After the fight, Joker goes at you in a physical confrontation and you drop the antidote by accident causing it to smash on the floor. After that, Batman says that even in spite of everything the Joker has ever done, he still would have saved him, which is ironic and a good insight into Batman's moral philosophy as a character. And after this, Joker dies. Like, seriously, even if we knew it was happening, it still comes off as shocking, because he's always been there. He's always been the biggest villain for Batman, even through all the years and years and years and several different adaptations of this mysterious character. The game ends with Batman carrying Joker's lifeless corpse out into the streets of Gotham. Commissioner Gordon asks him what happened, and he just leaves in silence. It's surprising, unique, and honestly, pretty sad. It's one of those times where even though the villain is an awful living being, you still feel a sense of remorse when they die, and that's something that makes Arkham City so story so good, especially as far as story and writing is concerned. It's extremely well written and it treats the character of Batman with respect, and I highly doubt that we'll ever see this level of writing from a Batman game for a very long time, or maybe even ever again. It's super unique and gripping, and I really, really love it. Upon Arkham City's release in 2011, it received unanimous praise and approval from those who played it, both fans and critics alike. Many people praised the game for its improvement upon Arkham Asylum, highly approving of the story as well as elements of the gameplay like the combat, open world, and boss fights. How it makes you feel like Batman, it won multiple Game of the Year awards, got a 10 out of 10 by Game Informer, as well as a critic score of 94 on Metacritic with a user score of 8.8. .8. It got great reviews from reviewers of all sorts, it sold 12.5 million copies copies as of July 2020 and was also the fourth biggest launch of 2011, only beaten out by FIFA 12, Gears of War 3, and L.A. Noir. The game also got remastered alongside Arkham Asylum in 2016 for 8th gen consoles and the Return to Arkham collection, and it fixed a lot of the bugs. It was a really well-received game that's still held in very high regard to this day, and I completely understand. In the end, is Batman Arkham City still the greatest superhero game of all time? I honestly think so, and I'm allowed to say that. It isn't even the nostalgia, because now I like Arkham City more than I even did previously, and reviewing the second half of the series is going to be pretty interesting. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Um, it's Labor Day tomorrow, so I'm going to take a day off from working on videos. My name is Johnny Seizure. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. More on the way. I will see you guys soon.